I get a rush every time I gun bust. My four pound is the only thing I trust. It's the only thing I love. Keep it on me just because. Run up on me, I'm a up. Shots flying, better duck. I get a rush every time I gun bust. My four pound is the only thing I trust. It's the only thing I love. Keep it on me just because. Run up on me, I'm a up. Shots flying, better duck. He got excited first time he got his hands on it. This that shit that turn a boy into a man, don't it? Huh? This that shit that slide round and kill your man for it. Whoa. He push it down so you talk it, you better stand you on better it. Stand Cause he ain't tryna talk no more with you niggas. Uh-huh. Once his palms hit that pistol, go to war with you niggas. Uh-huh. Man, that boy living vicious, he for sure about his business. Funeral service with the bishops, cause he did him like bishop. Boom, boom, boom. Couple niggas that was beefing at they bitchin' yeah. They extinct, got some limits, but he extended with the clippin' yeah. They was trying to throw some fists, but that shit he throw ridiculous Do you dirty when he dish it, six feet under in them ditches Killin' make him feel he livin', man, them demons got the best of him yeah. Streets got the best of him, so ain't nothing left of him yeah. First time he left something, splattered, made a mess of him yeah. Took a life, cause nigga life get no respect from him oh. I get a rush, every time I gun bust My four pound is the only thing it's the only thing I love, keep it on me just because Run up on me, I'm a up, shots flying, better duck I get a rush, yeah, 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 yeah. You're boy. now tuned into me, 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 me. Million dollars worth of game on Wallow 267 This is Gilly the King Listen, and let, first of all, let's get this right That song you just heard, listen man That song, Shooters Listen, that's by KP and Casanova. Shout out to Casanova I hope everything go right for you and your peoples But right now, we got somebody here that's extraordinary Listen the youngest, the youngest promoter ever, meaning he don't work for nobody. Uh-uh. Devin Haney uh-uh. don't work for nobody. Uh-uh. And we got BH right here. Listen, you already know what's going on. We talking about the Oak Town. We talking about big business is happening right now, uh-huh. right here on Million Dollars Worth of Game. Devin Haney, 22 years old. He is on promoter. He don't work for nobody. Nobody. Youngest champ. Uh-uh. He says Mike. Sex. Says Mike, says 22 who? years old. Since who? He is AKA. He is the youngest champ since who? Since Mike. Since Mike Tyson. That's that's pretty nice. <laughs> but, 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 when but, you when you compare the Mike like that's that's but, nice. but 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 this is we going we going to establish this. He's the check writer also. Mm-hmm. Talk heavy. It's a different type of swag. It's mm. a different type of flex. Mm, I mean, when you write your own checks, he got four braces on. Oh, yeah, him. Man. We already know. Yeah, he ain't got. We ain't got uno, dos, tres. He got cuatro. <laughs> on, you hear me? With the bus down, you know, and you know, he and, doing and, it heavy, and, man. And he not only, you know, not often do you see check writers that it beat your fucking ass. He beat the ass. He beat ass. More Hand like, wait, broke, wait, 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 shoulder I'm, fucked I'm up. Just saying, I'm just saying, it's a coming from jail. No, I'm saying he beat somebody <laughs> ass. He can talk like he that. Beat he beat ass. He beat you. Just did, you did a twenty no, piece. Like, you know, gotta, all right, you gotta school, explain shit, shit a little different. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I ain't saying nothing crazy. When you do twenty years, you gotta explain shit a little different. I'm just different, saying, man. Listen, man. All right, let's get into this shit, man. Let's get into this, and we won't listen, man. I just gotta say something, man. I'm from down the street, Philly, Baltimore, Tank. Tank ain't no joke. I'm just, I, I mean. I'm just saying. Why are you looking at me? Why are you looking <laughs> I'm just at saying. me? I mean, why are you looking at me? I mean, since when Philly niggas was looking after Baltimore? Oh, talk now. heavy. Oh. Talk heavy, yo. Uh, I'm just, you know. Talk heavy, yo. Talk I'm heavy. Just saying, listen, yo. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Javante Tank Davis. That's all I'm saying. Baltimore. I'm just saying, what's going on? Like, I don't, you know. <clears throat> well, well, what's I've seen on? him call Tank out a bunch of times. I see, quote me if I'm wrong. He said something to Tank. Tank, I, I'm the champion. You the number one guy to fight. You know, I, got, I, got, I, got, I got to get rid of this dude on a certain date, and then me and you going to fight. And then Javante said something. Stop playing with me. I beat your little ass. And then, no, you, res- then you responded like, they say everything, but they want to fight. And, and, and I say that for everybody. They will, say, they will say the craziest things, the most wildest things, but that they want to fight. When, who who have they said well, that was worth fighting? Who have they said? Who have, who has said that? Let's fight. Let's make oh, the fight shit. happen. Well, nobody. It hasn't been straight nobody. Straight that shit out. Man. I ain't got do, do you think it has anything to do with promoters? I mean, I don't really believe in all that, oh, oh across the street, or this promoter don't work with that promoter, because in reality, all the promoters work with each other. Every, when, when it's a big fight and it's a fight that make money and it makes sense, 
the promoters seem to work together. So it's up to us fighters to to tell our promoters. See, I I don't. I'm gonna co promotion deal. I'm yeah. gonna co promotion so deal. You, you, so you you like I, a joint venture. I call. I can I can fight whoever I want to fight. Right. I call the shots when it comes to me and my career. Right. These other fighters, they don't have the same. But at the end of the day, we us fighters, we have the power. If they really want to fight me, they, all they gotta do is tell their promoter that this is the fight that I want that I want to make happen, and it, the fight could be made. Hmm. Javante Davis, you beat him. How? How do you beat him? Um. I mean, I take none uh, away from Tank. He's great a, fighter. He's a he's a good fighter. Um, he got he I has like talent. That. He has power. But I'm just a different animal. I got everything. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's one fighter he do this good, another fighter do that good. Me, I have everything. I have no flaws in my game. And um, and back back then, I always said they better get me now. They better fight me now. <coughs> and, and and due time is gonna be is gonna be too late. And now I really feel like it's really just too late. Like I'm just so much above these guys, and I don't even think that the people even understand how far ahead I am. And like when they see me fight a guy like Gamboa or whoever, I'm so much better than these guys that they try to take they try to take away from a win, or they tr they don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Like they they don't understand what they're watching. Mm -hmm. And I think from years down the line that they'll truly understand how great I really am. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Radix Remedies. It's 2021 now, and Radix Remedies, you hear me, is a national CD provider launched by a group of friends who saw firsthand the benefits of CBD in nootropics. Radix has a wide variety of CBD-infused products, including their Sleepy Bears, helping you achieve deep sleep recharge, and their Norroot Focus, plus crafted for the go-getters that's always on the move. When taken daily, neural root focus plus promotes a brain function, memory develop, and positive mood for all day. Long lasting energy. Increase, increase your focus, motivation, concentration at work, school, or whenever you're working out. It's the peak you. You hear me? It had you at a peak all day long. Neural root is a result of thousands of hours of research and development by the top scientists, complex system modeling, neurobiology, organic chemistry, as well as dozens of MDs and PhDs, coding, designing, creativity, night shift, study sessions, entrepreneurs, stage performances, attention issues, whatever it is you're going through, just understand Neural Root has something on point for you. This is a real life limitless pill. Also, Radix has the only CBD hemp hemp flower monthly club in America. Sign up today. So just to sign up is radixremedies.com backslash barstool. That's radixremedies.com backslash barstool and use the code barstool to unlock some of the special deals. Radix Remedies. Let's go. I think uh, if I had to compare you to a fighter, it probably would be Floyd. You know, uh, I see you have the ability to beat probably 80 percent of the fighters that you fight with your feet. Yeah. Just with your feet alone and knowing and knowing your distance. You know what I'm saying? That alone, a lot of times could beat a lot of fighters. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you and Shakur Stevenson, I think, are the two best fighters as far as. Right now, and I'm not talking to young age. I'm not saying young age, <clears throat> old age, middle age. I think y'all two are the two best fighters right now. With And I'll throw Jerron Boots Ennis in there, too, with knowing distance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not as far as anything else. Just, just I'm just speaking on just distance. Where a guy can flick a jab out there, you won't even move because you know you can't hit me from where you threw that jab at. Yeah. And I'm about to come over top of that shit. People don't understand how long my arms really is right. and how big I am for the 130, for, for these 135 pounders. Um, but I just wish that they would fight me. You know, um, they're not giving me my just do as of now, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But pretty soon they're going to see. This is why that the, they favor fighters, the, the top guys, guys at the top don't want to fight me. Because I have so much skills. I have everything. I have the whole package. Well, you know, a lot of times, too, when uh, you come in the game and you come in and 
you could call the shots, mm. that slow your train down a little bit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because the reality is if these companies can't make the majority off of you, they don't, they don't, they don't want to keep just putting you out there. To, you feel what I'm saying? And if these guys lose to you, you your own company. Exactly. You, the last thing they want to do is let you get all the titles and call the shots. Well, Gilly, in, in, in retrospect, but that's that's why I think I I probably paid, played the best part, and it was was putting Devin in a position where, when he was ready skillfully, that he could put himself in legacy defining fights. Right. You know what I mean. And as his career develops, he won't have any regrets. He won't say I was with this promoter and I couldn't make it happen. I was with this other promoter and couldn't make it happen. Right. You know what I mean. So it's and. And the whole history of the fight game, you know, they, they don't just let you just make the money mm -hmm. unless you really like that like that. Right. You know what I mean? So I think and, you know, out of all the out of out, out of the era of the Tiafimo Lopez's, the Ryan Garcia's of the world, um, Devin is, is the one that, that checked the millions first. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's the one that made the millions. He set he set the tone for other fighters to now um, starting to want championships early. Mm -hmm. You know, because he turned pro before T.O. He turned pro before Shakur. Mm -hmm. He was a champion before these guys. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think that he set the tone and he did it in a way that in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a bad way, it pushed the older fighters out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Devin single-handedly controlled that movement that now the company started looking at fighters like Devin who was willing to go in there and fight anybody. Mm hmm you know, mm -hmm. and and you, you don't you don't make the money doing it. You, like you always say, you can't be bullshitting out here. You can't. You know what I'm saying? You can't. So so not only does he own his own company, you know, and he make the money, but he also puts it on the line, which it says a lot for him being a young fighter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And not just in the club. He don't smoke. He don't drink. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you know, in in retrospect, um, he's better than Floyd. You know what I mean? He's on course. To be better because he's better now at 22 Absolutely. than Floyd was at 22. Because Floyd was signed to Bob Aaron. Right? Absolutely. He had to and, buy himself and, out, right? And, right. He had to buy right. himself out. So if if it goes under Floyd's blueprint, then we're ahead of course because he, he never he never entered into any agreement that he had to to go and buy himself out of. And that's that's a good testament to his Yes. Is, uh, you and, know, stand right. down. and as a smart man who got good people around him, yeah, got that's, a, that's a testament Shit. to... to how y'all seen the game, which has got its attention, motivation, and education, and y'all accepted the game. Y'all said, okay, we see how Floyd did before he made these mistakes in the past when he was young. We not gonna make them mistakes. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You feel what I'm right. saying? Right. We already know you one of the most talented, gifted fighters out. You just gotta go show it now. And as long as you show it, Nothing can't stop this train. Absolutely. It's so, right. so basically what y'all did was put everything on y'all shoulders and on his talent. Right. We banking everything. We willing to bet it all on his talent. Absolutely. And, and you win it. I got to stop you for a minute. I just want to say something. I want to make a, a public service announcement. Baltimore. They go another Philly nigga. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold on. I'm not looking Since out for him. I'm making a public service announcement. Wait a I'm not listening. I'm putting them on, on tank, notice. Is Tank about to come out the back? <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. You hired him, Tank. I'm in there. What's the next announcement? Baltimore. The, the public service <laughs> announcement is Oakland is looking for you. Oh, absolutely. Baltimore. Oakland is looking for you. Talk to talk to your people. Talk to Tank. I'm going to step up out of it. I'm from Philly. But Baltimore, <laughs> Oakland is on. Listen, they looking for y'all in the daytime with a flashlight. Talk to y'all people. Tank, what's up, baby? What you doing? Tank know he got a duck face. Damn, Tuck. He got Mighty a duck ducks. face. Mighty Ducks? Yeah. Donald Baltimore duck. Mighty? Donald Come on, duck. Tank. Yep. Come on, man. That's all I had to say. Baltimore, get to talk to your people, man. Who else ducking you? Tiafimo. Loma was ducking me. Uh, I don't, I'm sure he probably want to fight now. That, you know, his fight is probably watered down now. And mm -hmm. he don't got the belts. Of course, he didn't want another shot at a title. But mm -hmm. uh, Gary Russell, Ryan Garcia... All the top guys, and none of them. If they, if any of them wanted to fight me, 
The fight would be made already. I've been begging for these guys. Well, begging. Hey, we're not be- wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. We're not begging no motherfucking more. I'll tell you that. Mm-hmm. Now, the winner of Ryan Garcia and Luke Campbell, step up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the winner of Ryan Garcia and Luke Campbell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Ryan, handle your business and come on, man. Mm-hmm. The hey. winner of Ryan Garcia and Luke Campbell. Oakland looking for you. Listen, we ain't going to leave them to, out either. Yeah, yeah, to, open, the, yeah to the, the, gar- to the Garcia the town, family. The to, town looking for you. To the Garcia family, we wish we wish you guys well. To mm. the Campbell family, wish you guys well. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, come on, let's get this shit on. Mm. Stop playing games. First quarter, April. April 2nd. Now. To be exact. Teofimo Lopez. I bet on him against... Lomachenko, when I was in a house. T.O.'s a duck, man. I was in a house full of people who Mm -hmm. thought I was crazy. Oh, he's a machine. He's this. (laughs) He's the Matrix. His arms is this little. Ain't no way he gonna be able to do that shit on the inside with that kid that punched that fucking heart. And I want me some money. But you, you a total different animal. You not 5'5". You look like you're about 5'8". Can we establish yeah. that Teofimo is ducking first? But establish that. Teofimo's definitely ducking. Okay. All right, we'll go ahead. And he's not undisputed. Was, no, no, that fight was not for undisputed. he's definitely not undisputed. That ESPN was definitely capping. Yeah. And, and Hold on, ESPN well, be picking sides and playing games? Like, what they be doing? Do they be double talking? Well, what it is is top-ranked fights on ESPN. Okay. So I ESPN, would. of course, is more lenient and 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 well Bias. spoken for, for top rank fighters. So they feel vocabulary is dedicated to certain they go in certain directions basically. Absolutely. I'm gonna say they I'm gonna say they are hundred percent biased. Um they are not giving the true the, the true story of what's going on. You know it's bits and pieces and parts. Um this kid is the baddest kid on the planet. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Listen, um when you talk about a fighter like like Gamboa who at the end of Tank, at the end of your man, Tank, and got bored. No, he had raccoon eyes. Huh? He had raccoon eyes. <laughs> who, who, who are you talking about, Tank? Tank. He did. He, he, had, did, raccoon. he did have he a had little circle. He had raccoon, he all did. the raccoon eyes. Now listen, <laughs> when Devin got through with Gamboa, he was looking just like how he's looking right now. Like nothing now, happened. I didn't even feel like no. I even was in a fight. Now, if you know baseball, then you know what he does. He pitches shutouts. Mm. Like the best in the game. Mm. See, you're you a sportsman, so you play yeah. all kind of sports. When you talk about Randy Johnson listen, and them, when you Curtis talk about, Jones. and I seen them youngsters that you had over there, and you wouldn't let them dunk the other day. No, you no, your, yeah. my, my my ACL was okay. a little tender, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you, but but you about shutting somebody else. You about making them not be able to do nothing. Yeah. Gilly know <clears throat> about taking something from a fighter and not letting them use it. Devin, whatever you do good, he gonna he take, gonna take that you. shit away from you. If you're one hand, and, 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 so you'll take Tank Power right away from him. He wouldn't be able to do nothing. Tank wouldn't even hit me. He wouldn't hit me. Ryan Garcia. He wouldn't hit me. None of I them think guys, Ryan Garcia is the easiest fight for you out of all of them. I'm just being honest. Ryan Garcia go one, two, and his head's right here. It's never no slip. It's never none of this. He don't got none of that to him. It's just one, two. One, two. That's a nigga that be mild. Well, no, listen, yeah. man, let me tell you something. But let me tell you something. adjustments. But when I'm when I'm done when I'm done with the, when I clean up the division, they are gonna say, oh well, he didn't fight nobody. Them guys, they wasn't nothing. Tank wasn't nothing. Ryan wasn't nothing. Tio wasn't nothing. They're gonna say that these guys wasn't nothing. But that's why I want to give them all their grams. No, Ryan's a good fighter. Mm-hmm. Tank is a good fighter. Mm-hmm. They said Floyd was they finished. Are, they, they when all, he was in there are. with Floyd, they said Floyd was finished, and nobody wanted to talk about it. He said he was done. That was right before the Conor McGregor fight. He was like 17, 18. How old was you? When we sparred, when I sparred Floyd, I was 18. Floyd didn't touch him. I'm just going to tell you what I heard through the grapevine because I got a lot of friends. I heard he touched Floyd up. I heard it. I'm just telling, listen, I'm telling you what I, what I heard. I heard he touched Floyd up. I heard Floyd was a little older, though, getting ready for Conor McGregor. Did he touch him up? Just the coming age? back. Listen, Floyd didn't touch him. And, you know, Devin, Devin touched Floyd up. He touched him up to the point that. Now, this is what the legend, because we're here in Las Vegas, and I ain't doing no capping up here, yeah. way up here in the sky, what you got, guys yeah. got, and this, you know what I mean? Floyd, even with Earl Spence, when Earl Spence got out on Floyd, 
Floyd called him back in and Floyd got back out on him. Now, whether it be the age or whatever, that was a defining moment in both Devin and both Floyd to understand that it was a real changing and a passing of the guard. Mm -hmm. And on that particular night inside the Mayweather in the doghouse, it was like it was like Devin had graduated. I knew I knew mentally he had graduated and I knew it was just a matter of time for him to just, you know, become the fighter that he is. And he's still and he's still getting better, you know. Me personally, I just thank Floyd for even giving me the opportunity to, you know, even say that I've been in the ring. And, he, mm -hmm. you know, to, even though it was at the end of his career, for me to be able to say that we, I've been in the ring with Floyd, I sparred Floyd, you know, just because he, he didn't have to do that. I was a, right. a, a young kid, right. you know, somebody that I always looked up to, or somebody yeah. that I always watched, mm -hmm. and he let me be get yeah. there. Yeah, but, yeah, but I know I, give, I, I, I do that too, but I know that he'd have whooped your ass if he could. You dig what I'm saying? Floyd ain't no punk, he ain't no sucker. Mm -hmm. And he has not let nobody do what I saw you do to him. Mm. Period. In and I, I can that's respect that. God. I can respect it because that's coming from your daddy. Because if yeah. he like, man, if God. you would have got in there and he would have beat the dog shit out of you, he would have beat the dog shit out of you. I told Floyd, no, when, I kept when, it real. When, like when I got song. in there, mm. Floyd was trying to take my head off, though. He wasn't. He does that to like, everybody. Was, no, he was definitely trying to mm. hit me with some hot shit for yeah. sure. He wasn't playing. So. Okay, so let, let's get this right. You and Javante Davis sparred twice. Yeah, we sparred twice. The first the, time he got out time, on you. First time we sparred in Baltimore, I want to say I was about, I think I was I was 13, about to turn 14, or I had just turned 14. Uh, and he was getting ready for one of his pro fights. I didn't even know who he was. My dad knew, knew who he was. He was like, oh, we're going to go to Baltimore and spar this dude. Yeah, because yeah, I didn't wait, want wait, him wait. scared of no Baltimore niggas. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So I took him Baltimore, young. listen, man. Yeah, so I took him young. Listen, we, went to, we went to Upton Gym. I took him to Upton Gym. Oh, shit. Right, right, right off of Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania? Yeah, absolutely. Right off of... When absolutely. Oh, okay, with Baltimore? Yeah. Wait, hold on. So wait, wait, hold on. You was... 13 years old? I was, I was either 13. Maybe 14. I was Maybe 13. At the most, 14. I was just getting ready for the world, the worlds. And I want to say I was 13, by the turn 14, or I was just turned 14, yeah. one of the two. And um, so we went out there, we sparred. He touched me, I'm not going to lie. I was, when we went out there, I was like, all right, when it was over with, we was like, yeah, we got some shit we got to work on. Yeah, we got shit we gotta absolutely. Work on. Yeah. So I went back home, regrouped, got to the drawing board, went back to the drawing board. And then one day, it was with Floyd, me and my dad, and uh, Floyd was like, Floyd was like, oh, AB got this guy. He want to spar you. He he your size. I'm like, what's his name? He like, Javante Davis. He like, is he good? I'm like, yeah, yeah, he good. Like, but mind you, I'm, <laughs> when I went to when I went to Baltimore, he touched me up. So I'm thinking like, yeah, he good. So then he like, you want to spar? I'm like, yeah. I didn't I didn't have my bag. I didn't have. Like, I didn't even know that we was going to go to the gym or nothing. We were just kicking in with Floyd one day. And um, so my dad went, I went to the gym with Floyd. My dad went to go get my boxing bag, get all my shit to spar from the house. And then he brought it to the gym. So, I wanted to go get some cash because I was ready to bet. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That and that's just what I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That go too. ahead. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, sir. <laughs> so that's when, that's when we sparred. And it was doghouse rules, fight to the finish, first person to First, first person to stop loses, and as my dad would say, we left I with picked, the cash. I left with the cash. We left with the cash. Oh, so it was money bet. A absolutely. And you know, Ooh, when, absolutely. when you win it, when you win in a sparring match, it got to be but clear because it ain't no winners in sparring. Right. So and I'm gonna tell you, you, and I'm gonna tell you who I won the money. I won. The, well, I won. I won the money from. It ain't no suck. It's A B Daddy, and um and Lee. What uh what was Lee? Coach Levi. 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 Coach Levi. Mm. And uh and A B's father. Mm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So this ain't no, this ain't no fake shit, no. And it, I know it was recorded, huh? Yeah, I yeah. Mean, uh, Floyd got the recording, and uh, this reporter named Ellie, Ellie Setback, he got the he. Uh, every time Ellie I asked, Setback reporting. Every time I asked, Tell every time we asked Ellie recording. Every time we asked him, where does footage at? He talking about always oh, yeah. in his phone, but you know he he tank man, so that's why he he hiding the footage or whatever in case mm. maybe. Man. I got twenty thousand for everybody. That, anybody that come up with the footage, because you come up with the footage, it's, it's, got twenty it's, bands. It's, for it's you. one more person that got it. It's a B guy. A B guy like a, a like he had a cameraman at that time, and I saw him in traffic one day. He was like, "Hey, I got the sparring with you and Tank if you want it." But we was at a fight. And it just was fans was approaching me and stuff like that. So, 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 so I want the real was fight. Was it? Was it? Was it? Was it? Was I want to make brutal? it happen. 
Because I mean, that doghouse shit first is person brutal. First person to quit. First oh, person to quit. Oh, Tank, you quit? Who's the first person to quit? I'm up here holding shit down and you quit, Tank? The fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> I just told you we got some money on it, man. This shit oh, is for real. Oh, my God. Man. Let me say something. This shit is real. Damn. So we got Teofimo Lopez. We got Ryan Garcia. We got... Tank out the way. Y'all not the same weight class, right? But me personally, this is by far the only person I could see having a mega, a super mega fight with you about two, three years from now, Shakur Stevenson. Y'all looking at me again, huh? <laughs> look. I ain't looking at you. No, no wait, I'm, wait, wait. I'm let me just, tell you. I'm let just... me tell you. Because, no, you look. And the thing that, that, that uh, the good brother, Jay Prince down in Houston, said mm -hmm. was, after Devin finished tearing shit up and after Core finished tearing shit up, we're going to get together and make the motherfucking biggest event happen in boxing. See, I didn't even know. Legendary. I didn't even know. I didn't even yeah. know Jay Prince said that. Yeah, but yeah. If you look that's on how you YouTube, know. Yeah, yeah. Most if motherfuckers don't that. know shit about boxing, <laughs> but Gilly know a little something. This episode is also sponsored by ShipStation. One thing I like about ShipStation, no matter what you're selling, I don't care what you're selling or where you're selling. Amazon, SD, your own website. Like me, I use ShipStation for Wallow267.com. I send a lot of merch out. It's simple. I'm talking about it's so simple. It makes everything extremely easy to manage on any device. Guess what? Even your cell phone. Yeah, the cell phone you walk with, you get, listen, you can manage everything on your cell phone. I'm talking about all your orders. United States Postal Service, uh, UPS, FedEx. I'm talking about every, I'm talking about it works for all major carriers i'm talking about there's no ship station also offer big discounts on shipping rates not any business can access the same discount usually receive for the large fortune 500 companies but one thing about ship station they look out for you in so many different ways but what i need you to do in order to get i'm talking about in order to really get i'm talking about 2021 i'm talking about to really tap in the ship station the way i'm tapped in the ship station just use my code game for 60 day trial i'm talking about that's two months free no hassle no stress free i'm talking about go to shipstation.com click the link at the microphone at the top of the page type in game that's shipstation.com enter game ship station make ship happen clearly to me my, in my personal opinion to me Devin and Shakur is a step above everybody else as far as the young, the younger up and coming. That that's just my personal opinion. I think I think Tank has the ability to be that, but it's just my personal opinion. I don't think Tank love boxing like them to love boxing. I don't th not necessarily I don't think he lived boxing. But like one, one thing like I can say about Tank boxing. is we see Tank knock people out, but what have we saw when Tank can't knock you out? When he can't knock you out, then what are you gonna do? When he can't hit you, when he gotta sit down and he gotta think. We see, everybody saw his last fight. What was he doing before he knocked him out? He was getting touched. He was so, getting touched. He was getting touched. So what if somebody touching you and now you gotta think? You can't just throw something wild and just hit him with it. You got to set it up. You got to set traps. That's what we got to see. That's what we got to mm. see. But to me, I, I, I like you two guys and another kid, Jerron Boutinis out of Philadelphia Fights, coming up, you know. I, I, I think, like, y'all three are, like, the ones that can really be get the $100 million payday. You know what I'm saying? Get the the... Be the next pay per view star that do a million plus pay per view buys. One well, to, get to, the, five. to get to the hundred million, you got to get to the millions, and Devin is the only youngin that's doing that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. I've yeah. seen you and Tank going back and forth, but Tank's a lot older. Than yeah, you. he's older. Yeah, Tank, Tank is, is what twenty five, twenty six, twenty six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's a like different, that. it's a different, it's a different generation. Cause I seen something. Y'all was going back and forth. He said you don't get paid what he make or something to that aspect. And and I'm pretty sure though Tank probably is making good money right now. 
I don't, I don't know, you know, on Cal's pocket. I don't know. Sure. We make, we making good money. I'm you know what I'm sure. saying? I'm, I'm, I'm I know say, y'all making, but I'm no, sure but but money, this is so. what I, what I, what I got, I gotta say, and to my brothers and to my sisters, to the culture. Not only did this man do this, that he also put his family in the winning position. He stayed down with his dad, just like his dad stayed down with him. Mm-hmm. He owns the company. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because that's what you, as a, as a, as a parent, you set up a foundation for your son, right. and then he set up a foundation for his son. Right. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So not only that, does he have a solid foundation, but he a A1 nigga. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because he ain't never cut his old man off. You right. dig what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And he can. But it's about putting him in a position, and then his old man being 102, and we keep that synergy. Absolutely. It ain't about his old man hanging it over his head that he got to do nothing mm-hmm. or he got to do this or do that. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I always, you know, when I get a chance to talk to some real ones, you know, I like to I like to put it on and give it real. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so I so it. the only pressure you really put on him in life is to be great in that ring. For him. Yeah, for yeah, him. For him. Yeah, you got to be you, the only yeah. pressure you really got to be I was great. BH the great before. Absolutely. Yeah, you did. Absolutely. All, <laughs> all, <laughs> all the <laughs> Now let me ask so. you something, though. I got to ask Deb something. Anybody ever put you in your pockets when you was a kid coming up? Never in life. I never, I never had to catch. Knock on wood, though. You know, oh, yeah. I never want that to happen. Which, oh, so you ain't never had to come home like you know, Dad, this shit happened, boy. You know what I mean? You ain't never, had, nigga, get out there and rumble that motherfucker. I, I never, I never, had, never had, had to. I never had a black eye. I never had a bloody nose. I never had none of that. This motherfucker. The most I've been was sore. That wait, was wait, it. wait, wait. Hold on, wait, hold on, wait. That's so, baby, wait, wait, hold on. You twenty two years old, so that means you'd have been through a eleven. Thousand spar matches. You never had a bloody nose. I never had a bloody nose. I never had a black That's eye. A bad motherfucker. I swear to God, anybody that mm-hmm. come out and tell you that, oh, I gave him a black eye, I gave him anything, come out and say it. No, nobody. Listen, nobody will say that they rocked him. You know how somebody say, right. man, nigga, move, yeah. but I wobbled you, I rocked you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. When you seen him in Tiafimo, he said, "Till you never even touched me." Right. You know what I'm saying? And Tiafimo yeah. kind of gave the. the Hill was boring, so that just let me know Dad boxed the shit out exactly. of there. Exactly. I kept, I kept exactly. knocking. We kept knock. We went to Newark, New Jersey. We went to Newark, mm-hmm. knocked on Shakur door because we knew who he was. We came up to you know the um, New York and and Richard Hitchinson. Mm-hmm. We went and knocked on their they doors. We went to uh, Hostwe Vargas up there, knocked mm-hmm. on their doors. Just going you know what I'm saying? Knocking on mm-hmm. niggas' doors. Yeah, yeah, he, no, he was on the, tour. The, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, so I wanted him to know that. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no nigga no tougher than no nigga nowhere. All these niggas is the same, whether mm-hmm. they Philly niggas, Baltimore, mm-hmm. Oakland niggas, mm-hmm. LA niggas. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that and that's just what we did. But Dead Young and Shakur, that's my little nigga. You know what I'm saying? And and Jay is my guy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I got him on speed dial. He, you know what I'm saying, in terms of let me know what's happening in the business. I get it from the top. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I learned this shit from the, the baddest niggas in the game. Mm-hmm. And being Jay one of them. You know, so um, Shakur, the legendary sparring of Shakur when Devin was 16 and Shakur was 18 mm-hmm. was Core came out and, he's, you know, Devin, you know, helped me get get sharp so I can go to this Olympics. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Now, Devin was off, you know, because he's, he's 16. So he's not he doesn't have a tournament or nothing set up. So he was in L.A. Mm-hmm. with the Chris Brown shit mm-hmm. for Halloween. And I said, Dev, Core and them is in, in town. He said, all right, I'm going to come up and I'm going to help him. But of course, Devin at this point in time, he has a social media following and all the things. Mm-hmm. So when the sparring got out, it was more so we looked at it like, look at Dev with Big Brother. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. that wasn't the first time that we had been to Newark. They, Core and came out and stayed yeah, with us and right. stuff. So when they, when they saw it, it was we felt a compliment to Devin's game at 16 to be in there with his big brother that was on his way to the trials. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Devin being too young to go to trials, so he went pro. Mm-hmm. But he was in the same youth. He won the youths. He won the JOs. He won all the shit. Right. But they had dropped it, took off the headgear and dropped the age, yeah. bumped the age up. Mm-hmm. And so that year that they bumped it up affected Devin more than anybody else because we were in London for the Olympics. Part 2012, 2012 mm-hmm. where Loma Chico and all them won, and we had worked real hard to try to qualify for 2016, right? Mm-hmm. But that's when they bumped the age. That's up. when they bumped the age up. Mm-hmm. So it would meant that Devin would be in the 2020, yeah. right? Yeah. 2020 and Olympics, yeah, and look yeah. at him right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it would have been. So he would have yeah. never had 25 fights, a right. world champion, just the money, and all the stuff. Starting you know to go pro saying? next year. Yeah, he's starting yeah. to go yeah. pro. So I think a lot of that mileage that the kids get on them 
chasing those victories attributes to then when they turn pro because he's he's like he's like a brand new car mm-hmm. you know what i mean right. yeah. at, and a world champion right. at the same time you know let me ask you this who who do you look at like i, I told you i look at you i look at boots i look at shakur stevenson i got you know i know all the youngest the prime time chris Kamal. i got a lot of youngins that i really fuck with right who do you look at and be like He's special too. Um, it ain't got to be in your weight class, like I like Canelo Alvarez. I know he's special. Oh, just in general, like yeah, yeah. Somebody. It ain't got to be um, in your weight class, but you look at him and you be like, I know somebody. I like who's special. I like I'm Crawford. Say I like Crawford. Um, who was you gonna say? I like Benavides. I like Benavides. <laughs> the, not the bootleg. The, but, the, but I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the real David. The, the David, 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 David. But I like Caleb Plant too. Oh, Caleb Plant, Caleb Plant, Plant like is Caleb Plant. a like beast. Yeah. Caleb Plant is yeah. a fucking beast. Um, what's crazy is I watch everybody. Like people don't think that like like young guys. I be looking at the the young dudes coming up too. They don't mm. know that. Like I be watching them. Like when they see me, they don't be thinking like, oh, like you know me. Like right. yeah, I know you. I be yeah. watching you. So I be watching like everybody. I just love boxing in general. So, mm-hmm. um, you know who surprised us uh, that we watched is when Chocolatito. Yeah, Remember? Chocolatito. Chocolatito yeah. said, "Yeah, we have been watching him." Mm-hmm. And then he said he seen him. He was like, "He was like, I watch you, man. Yeah. You're really good, man." Mm-hmm. And we was like, "Get the fuck out of here, yeah, yeah. Chocolatito!" <laughs> <man>. <laughs> the Jay, no, one time, Chocolatito was icing everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pound for pound, he was pound, 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 yeah, pound, yeah. Pound, yeah. Pound, yeah. Pound, yeah. Icing eight two. He ran into the one dude and he. Yeah, but um, who you listening to couple, right now, music wise? Dirt, Dirt, my favorite right now. I like Lil Baby too, though. Um, Vaughn, of course. Yeah, rest in peace, Vaughn. Yeah, rest in peace. Um, that's why I came out to my last fight was Vaughn. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but them two like, the, who I listen to the most, Dirk and Lil Baby right now. How how's the ladies treating you? <laughs> I mean. He treated me well, you know. Uh, I'm the champ. They doing the, they they doing what they supposed to. <laughs> okay. Ooh, <talk> this. <laughs> you the champ. They doing what they supposed I'm the to. The champ. Huh? <laughs> so you singled up. <laughs> Say no more. Say no more. No, 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 no. I gotta no. This where you leave your truth. Man. You know what I see? This this what they want to see. They want to see the uncomfortability. You see that laugh? <laughs> oh, that laugh is crazy. Oh, shit. oh fuck. <laughs> no, I mean, I got, I got a situation going on. I'm in a situation. I'm in a situation. 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 Yeah. Well, I think there was, I seen I seen you on the ground. <laughs> situation. I like that. Situation, huh? Hey, let me ask you a question. So, what's your goals for 2021? I want to make the biggest fights happen. There's so many big fights to be made. Um, so much money to be made. Um, but the main thing is making these fight big fights happen. I want all the belts. I want I want to be the undisputed champion in the lightweight division, and that starts with Tiafimo Lopez. I know you're still doing your thing right now, and you're focused on you know Devin Haney, but you got any fighters that you want to pick up yourself and put under put yeah. under your banner? Uh, I actually your... I actually got two fighters that I'm working with right now: mm-hmm. Darren Cunningham and uh, Amari Jones. He's getting ready to go pro. He fights February second mm-hmm. in uh, Louisiana, so uh, I'm working with some fighters right now, but I'm the type of guy, I want quality over quantity. I don't want to just sign a bunch of guys and just to have guys to, to yeah, fill just, up a card and, mm-hmm. you know, just to say that they signed to me. No, I, want, I actually like the fighters that I'm signing, but I also think that they good. It's like both. I don't want to just be signing guys who I don't really know. It's some guys, my cousin told me he know him, so he wants me to sign him. Yeah, just right. sign, yeah. Right, I'm, I'm not into that. I want, a, he I might be a journey to, man, but we're going to yeah, sign him anyway, yeah, throw him with a card, yeah. under other card, get him some play paper. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. they've been doing that shit forever. Yeah, Motherfucker no. be journeys, man. Johnny No. Yeah, in this corner, Johnny Nobody. Yeah. Oh, who he signed to? Oh, that's why he's getting a check. Yeah. The main man got him signed, but he ain't. Shit, but I got it. You got to also be as hungry as this kid because I, how, many, how many fights did you have in Mexico? 11 or 12. Mexico yeah, ain't no yeah. joke. And, Fucking and, joke. And for people, Mexico is not what you think it is. Going down there and you just about to just go beat up a Mexican and you no. about to leave. No. no. It's a lot tougher. It's a lot tougher than you think. And for a young fighter, especially, um, uh, you know, at being 16, 17 years old, you know what I mean? It was it was a tall task that uh, that he, 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 he passed with flying colors, you know, before he went to, to show box. And being also... 
a showbox alum right. with three fights there. You know what I mean? He he has the uh, he has all the ingredients, man. Now, I remember you know him in mean? Philly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. What was that, Mason Menard? You from Mason Menard? Yeah. yeah. What's the best part about other than the, the belts? Do you know the fame? What's the best part about being Devin Haney? Uh, just being able to provide for my family and to, to give back. I mean, I always dreamed to, to be in this position to where, you know, I could take care of my family. I can help my family. I can put people in position to, to make money and, you know, do things that they love or that they're passionate about. Do it, do it make you feel some type of way that you're not on the pound for pound list? No, no, not at all. Because that's what the pound for pound list is a made up list. I mean, that's just what, yes, your list, his list, his list. That's who, it's all who, have, what you think. So mm -hmm. that's, it's all opinionated. I don't, it's what Because it that, you, you, that's a great point because just a uh, uh, couple months ago, uh, Lomachenko was the greatest fighter that ever walked the planet. Yeah, now right. it's, now he's probably not even in, in in a lot of people's pound for pound list now. So right, it's nobody has it's like not ranked or nothing like that. It's just which what somebody else think. So if I'm never in a pound for pound list, that's fine. That's their opinion. I want to collect belts. I want things that actually matter. When you got a belt, what can they say? I got mm -hmm. the belt. I have all the belts. They mm -hmm. can't say nothing. I worked. Off, I fought Trash. for it. You can't say you can't say that. Right. What a pound for pound list. That's as a dad, do it do it irritate you knowing that your son is one of the baddest men on the planet, if not the baddest man on the planet, and they don't recognize him bullshit. as that. Well, I mean, he's definitely he's the youngest. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And to have accomplished what he has accomplished, you know, it's all blessings to God. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And I thank God every day for him and his his just whole being, his energy, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, the place that he is in life. Mm -hmm. And I just thank God every day. So um, it, to, to ask your question, it's not irritating at all. It's part of, the, part of the business, and I'm thankful to get up every morning and, you know what I mean, and fight this fight, you mm -hmm. know? This episode of Me and Hours Worth of Game is brought to you by Amazon Music. I told y'all I've been using Amazon from the start. It's been amazing. For a limited time, you can get f your first three months of Amazon Music for free. You hear me? That's for free. Unlimited for free. That's access to 70 million songs, over a million podcasts. You you don't never have to listen to no ads or nothing. You can go just stream whatever you want, listen to whatever you want, whenever you want. You're going to love Amazon Music Unlimited as much as I do. Trust me. Take advantage of this incredible offer today for a limited time. You can get three months of Amazon Music Unlimited for free. Go to Amazon.com backslash millions. That's Amazon.com slash millions. You hear me? Million. M-I-L-L-I-O-N. Million. That's Amazon.com backslash million. And get first three months of Amazon.com for free. Get the Amazon music for free. You can't beat that, man. And it starts at $7.99 a month. After that, subscribers only. Terms apply. Offer expires 1-11-2021. Go get that. What's what's the now I'm not I'm speaking not on not from a father's perspective, from a from a coach, a trainer's perspective. What's the best part about working with Death? Um, he has a crazy work ethic. You know what I mean? You never have to have to tell him, you know, okay, it's time to run, it's time to, you know. He he's, you know, he's the boss. He he sends out a text to everybody. Meet at at this time, you know, and and he and he does it. Um, our motto was, it's twenty four hours a day. So pops, I'm gonna get it done, and he gets it done within those twenty four hours. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's not a old school training, you know, uh, approach where. I'm waking him up at six o'clock in the morning, and you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I got the towel, and I'm like, "All right, come on, let's." You know, no, it's um, it's about he's a professional, he's a champion, and within that time, you know, we uh, we we get it in. So your motto is pretty much, I got to put in a certain amount of hours at the gym. It don't matter when I put them in. Uh, I just got to put them in. I wouldn't say that because some days we go in the gym and it may be a short day, but we, we in there and we working on certain things. And, mm -hmm. you know, every day I got a new millennial dad so and mm -hmm. a coach. So mm -hmm. he understands the, the new way of doing things and a new way of coaching. So, it well, some days we won't go in the gym. We won't got to 
go work hours, endless hours. Some days we go in there, we being strategic and we be working on certain things and we getting out. Okay. So, so give me an example. Okay. You might go in this is a short day. We get there, get to the gym at nine in the morning. We just, were we just working on defense today? We start with some defense, but my dad always, we, we got to end it with that offense. We got to, mm-hmm. you know, we, we can't work on defense too long without punching somebody back. Yeah, because cause okay. cause, cause your whole thing is I make you miss and I make you pay. And I swim and don't get wet. That right? 100%. Uh, for, for, for y'all that don't know what swim and don't, don't get, get wet, wet yeah, that means I, I hit you and not get hit. <laughs> yeah. That's what that means. I'm but, old school but, player. Yeah. But I would think an, an advice that we could give other fathers and other coaches when you say millennial, when he's speaking on it, is the fact that, that you know, He's a he's a he's nocturnal. He's a night guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he really comes to life during the fight, which is at night. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Everything mm-hmm. he, he comes to life, you know. So the morning, which is traditionally the time when coaches, you know what I mean? They're live. Right now. But it's not about me being yeah, right, live. It's right, about absolutely. him being live. Right, absolutely. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, his I'm, schedule is it, it's all about his schedule because we knew that that this time would be coming, that he was going to be the million dollar fighter, Mm -hmm. billion dollar uh, entrepreneur that he is. Mm -hmm. So gearing that around him, and that could be, in retrospect, it could be a dad that's working nights, you know, I mean, that's works during the day or works nights. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt that the schedule should be around the fighter, you Mm -hmm. know what I mean, if you really believe in him like that, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And it could be whatever schedule, whatever hours that they sleep or whatever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think as a team, you know, church and everyone, you know, we we understood that about Devin. And it came from like Tom pointing out times that he was with Floyd and Floyd would be at the club with everyone like Devin. He doesn't drink and he would run right along the limo or right with the, you know what I mean? The mm-hmm. caravan, mm-hmm. he would get it in. So a lot of like what Devin will, will always point out the the things that Floyd was an example of while we weren't as close to him, but we were watching him from afar. Right. And then Devin getting close to him, close to Floyd and him putting all the pieces and the puzzles together right. that, you know what I mean, makes sense that you have the 24 hours and being the hardest working kid in boxing came easy by allowing him to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, Absolutely. just allowing him to do it. Absolutely. Right? Mm-hmm. Where do you see... Let me ask you this. Do you, how important is being a pay-per-view star to you? Do you want to be a pay-per-view star? That's definitely the goal. Um, I want to be a pay-per-view star, uh, but that all come with time. Absolutely. Like I said before, I, I mean, the other day I said this, I want to be, I want to make a hundred million dollars <coughs> before I'm at the age of 25. I want to have a hundred million. And 36 months. Well, you pay, months. well, I'm going to tell you what, if you watch him the last fight, either you paid for it or you stole it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah, so that, you that, did. That, so that's yeah, a form of pay-per-view street. right there. Yeah, that's what, that was pay-per-view right there. Yeah. yeah. You did? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it pay-per-view, wasn't on free TV. Pay-per-view is no longer just pay-per-view. That's a name. It's a model. Yes. And that model could be everywhere. Mm-hmm. It could be in different platforms. It's, a, it's about having that paywall. Yeah, mm-hmm. So when you hear pay per view, do it. Everybody do it. Pay per view right. mean a paywall in front of it. That's right. all that's, it means. Right. So, right. But they, but there was a new like like the Walkman was named mm-hmm. after Sony made the name Walkman, but then on everybody else, they just you know. But you know, like you said, man, you you pay for it. You Absolutely. pay for it or you play for it. I don't know how you got <laughs> it, but you got <laughs> it. You was watching. It was Showtime. You was watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know you watch them old tapes. Who five fighters from back in the day that you watched the most? I'm talking about legends. We talking about in the history of boxing. Five legends that you watch and you t- and you said, ooh, if I get that, and if I get that. Roy Jones, Sugar Ray Leonard, Ali, some old fighters like Ezra Charles. It's so many old fighters. I couldn't narrow it down to just five, but it's a, it's a lot of old fighters that that I watch. I, wa- I, wa- I want to say I watch uh, more old fighters than new fighters. Even though I still watch, I still keep up with all the, the young guys and all the guys coming up, but I just love watching old fighters because it just was a different era and just to see how, how they, their style and what, and what they brought to the game, 
I just like to watch the 05. Rest in peace to Ali, right? If you could have a conversation with Ali and, and you could ask Ali the greatest for some advice, what advice would that be and what would you He had a conversation with Ali yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. Before, before Ali passed away, we, uh, his daughter used to train in my gym and she let me FaceTime him. So we talk, I talked to Ali. So it was crazy. That was, it was, you was just like, damn. Yeah. It's still crazy to even say that, like be able to say that. Cause right. some, some people wouldn't believe that. Like, right. yeah, I talked to Ali before, you wouldn't believe it. Right. Yeah. yeah I, we got I the did. picture. Oh, yeah. We did the picture. That was nice at twenty two years old, right now. But uh, any any advice? Not about to cut you off. Mm -hmm. But any advice that I would ask him, I would ask him like more about like how to how to gain the people, how to how to bring uh, my people together, and how to you know. Um, inspired the people like he did like nobody ever like in boxing so far has been able to get the people like Ali did like his name is going to live on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever mm -hmm. and people talk about Ali and he always, it's always in a good space I, I want my name to be remembered like him and Ali the mm -hmm. thing I like about Ali That's deep. Mm -hmm. like like Ali knew how to he was a promoter you before know, the before social media, yeah. he was with social media. What social media do for some people, athletes today, he done that for himself. He had a, he had mm -hmm. extraordinary mouthpiece, and he understood. He knew how to articulate himself. And when he got in front of them cameras, he came alive. It was like he lit up, and he knew he, he was all. It was like he was always prepared when they was coming with the bullshit. Yeah. He knew how to shut it down, and he knew how to get his thing off and advertise what he had going on. You know what I mean? That that's what was so I great. I felt like about Muhammad him. Ali was the first rapper. Yeah, he was a bad. Boy. If Ali was like literally, if Ali was here was today, like, the 60s? he would be the biggest star today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Because of the Legend. personality like, alone. Like, look at like no disrespect, but look at Anthony Joshua. He's a mega star, mm -hmm. but now look at Ali. Mm -hmm. And and Anthony Joshua is huge over there in the UK, but mm -hmm. Ali yeah. just Ali. Ali was yeah. huge in the world. Yeah, in the world. Another one of our sponsors is Harry Razors. Harry Razors, listen, is a part of my New Year's resolution. My New Year's resolution is to take better care of myself. So for that, I got to continue to use Harry's Razors. Them five blades keep me super clean, looking right. And, you know, my health is just, you know, it just make me look good, man. You know, taking care of myself, man, just looking good out here with Harry's Razors. Thanks to Harry's Razors. But also, one thing that I want to give a shout out to Harry's Razors is for in 2020, they donated 1% of their sales to nonprofits that provide mental health care for men in need. And then, you know, and I'm talking about a total of 500,000 guys got access to services. Shout outs to Harry's for that, man. But, you know, Rages can be more expensive. But with Harry, you will know that you're still paying as little as two dollars a cartridge. That adds up. I'm talking about. But listen, think about this. For New Year's, I'm talking about New Year's. I'm talking about the Harry's customers. Listen, they're going to get a $3 set. What I need you to go is go to harrys.com slash million. Harry's.com slash million. And when that's set, you'll get for $3, you'll get five blade razors weighted. I'm talking about a weighted handle, foaming shave gel with aloe and a travel cover. But what I need you to do, I need you to go to harrys.com slash million and get on top of that right now. Harry's razors. Personality sells more than products. And when you got that personality, and when you, and, and like I said, when you, you know, the look is the hook. When you look like something, when you look like success, you speak success, you're going to have success. For sure. And what he was able to do, and, and just like you doing here, right here today, you speaking things into existence. You ain't, you ain't slacking about nothing. You ain't, you ain't fatigued about your mindset and your approach to what, what you going to have. You, you said, no. And I'm going to put it in short firm, short, short, you know, short form. On million dollars worth of game, Devin Haney said in 36 months, he's going to get 100 million. 36 months. He said 25. He's 22 now. You do the math. 36 months. Mm -hmm. And he believed in it. He ain't flinch. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't, you know, he ain't, he ain't, ain't none of that. 36 months. And that's motivation. And that's what you got to have. Because if, if he's able to be the youngest promoter, you know, in boxing, right? This thing been here for a long time. This ain't no, we go all the way back to Jack Johnson and all that type shit. This been here for a long time. A young black man. Young black man. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about 22 years old. Write his own checks, doing his own thing, sitting in 36 months. When by the time I hit 25, I'm going to have 100 millions. And he's standing on that shit. I believe him. 
And that should be motivation to you if you're a young black man living mm-hmm. in the inner cities of America, you're a young black sister. I'm talking, we talking about a young man that come out of the town, East Oakland. And if you could do that, and, and, and let me tell you something about Oakland. Oakland is the same thing. We all come from the ghettos of America, mm-hmm. and everybody's struggle is the same. Your mom, you know, his mother, his grandma, his aunt, borrowed sugar like moms did. Borrowed some bread, borrowed some brother, butter, whatever it may be. It's just a different name. Diff- I'm talking about all the same. The struggle is the same, different mm-hmm. name. So when you look at Devin Haney, and you and he's telling you in 36 months he's going to have 100 million, and he's establishing generational wealth, why you can't do it? And I ain't saying you got to be a boxer. I ain't saying you got to be a rapper. And, and, and I'm just I saying say that, you got to believe in yourself. That, I'm not saying just in boxing. I'm on, in business. In, in life, I'm multiple sources of income, not only in boxing. Mm-hmm. You don't got to be just a boxer just to. Yeah, to, to yeah say you ain't you got to be one. that you're going to get $100 million. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do it in boxing and other places. Licensing deals, all type of shit he got and going you, on. And you know what? And then even to, to say that, you know, coming from Oakland, right, we, we learned to have an independent. State of mind. You Shout know out to mean? Forty Short. And, yeah, Fort, uh, uh, Short, Forty. Um, um, Master P went over there too. Yeah, he went over there. He, he mm-hmm. learned the game Richmond. over there too. You mm-hmm. got you got Filthy Rich. Filthy he Rich. Out there, he out there doing it. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Shout out to all them guys. You know what I mean? You got Fabby. Mark, you got Fabby. You got Fabby that's doing this thing. Fabby, you know what I mean? With the dope era and you know what I'm saying? Then you got Mozzie up there in SAC. You know, it's a yeah. Northern California yes, thing. Yes, it is. But, but, um, it's yeah, it's, God, a, it's a testament, but it goes it goes back to 1966 and the Black Panthers yes. being founded there. Not yes. only the Black Panthers, but the uh, the who were vanguards for the community, mm-hmm. right, on the streets. And then you had the Black Guerrilla family in 1966 yes. that was vanguards for the people in prison, for the brothers in mm-hmm. prison. You know what I mean? So seeing that and coming from that, my mom being a Panther, you know, it was always instilled in to having pride in being black yes. and, and and ownership. You know what I mean? So. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, it just feels good to see Devin talking and to be over there at 22 and, and being an example for other brothers and other yes. fathers and families yes. to to take what was being described as um, dysfunction with Devin fighting and stuff in school to turn the whole thing around and then bet on himself and to be an athlete, a clean athlete. And I can't reiterate it enough, just, you know, not smoking, not drinking, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so so when I say that, I, hopefully we're, we're examples for other parents to see their kid and not say, oh, you know, uh, he 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 going to go to jail. You know what I mean? No, this boy is over there fighting instead of saying, oh, you keep fighting, you're going to go to jail. No, you go to the gym and become a world champion. And that's just what I did. I didn't listen to the principal or listen to nobody and say, go give him a whooping about it. I said, man, I'm going to take you to the gym. And when he looked at me. He, we was in a Range Rover. I wasn't having no problems mm. in life. Right. Right? And I looked over. I said, hey, man. I said, man, what you, what, what you just fighting again in school? What you want to do? I said, I'm going to take you to the gym. And he looked over at me like that and said, okay. And then looked out back out the window this way. I said, oh, yeah, I'm, I want somebody to whip his ass. Mm-hmm. And I want to say something to you, now, BH. Uh-huh. I want to say something that's very what? important to you. A lot of y'all don't understand. Before this, we had a conversation and he was just talking about fatherhood. It wasn't about boxing. Mm-hmm. It was about the love and the protection and the insurance that he put over his son so his son was able to go ahead and do this boxing thing. Mm-hmm. But it was established in the house and he was just talking about this protection thing. And it was about just giving his son game and educating and it was a father-son thing. Mm-hmm. We got to really get back to that in the community right. and understand the importance of that. Regardless of what you, you know, whatever goals or whatever your child want to do, yeah. But you want to establish that father son thing, like he loved his son, mm-hmm. like he really a father That's to this day. I'm talking about you want some, now, he wants, you want some father yeah. shit. This ain't got fuck boxer, right? Because this would be possible. Because he could be a hell of a boxer, saying, but he could be dumb as a fucking brick, and, and he wouldn't be able to go but in the, the way gym. He articulate himself <laughs> in a way he, he, you, 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 you know that he, he was raised right, and, and he wouldn't be able saying? to go in that ring and go up against all that shit that he went up against if it wasn't right home. The same way you see these kids, they in school and they can't think, they can't, shit ain't right home. That home, that, see, everything start home. Mm-hmm. A lot of times we see young cats out here in the streets putting it down and they doing this and they doing that. A lot of times motherfuckers just be looking for some love, man. Mm-hmm. That's why they got to go to the big home. And some, a lot of motherfuckers never was told they was love. I love mm-hmm. you. 
Like a lot of motherfuckers ain't never had a hug. A lot of motherfuckers ain't never come home and have a dad wait. Ain't never come, ain't, shit ain't go wrong in school and they dad could pull up. They dad in the penitentiary, they dad dead or they dad on some dope or they dad then ran off. Mm -hmm. That's the reality of the shit. Real shit. You know what I mean? But B.A. stayed ten toes down with his son and look at what happened, man. So, you know, salute your child at all the time. Always let them know that they're extraordinary. Mm -hmm. As soon as they come out the womb, let them know they're extraordinary and put that security and put that insurance on them. Mm -hmm. That they know, damn, you know what? I can go out here and just be a kid. And I could be great. I ain't got to worry about a dope shit because my dad got me. And I, and, sal and, and, I salute you for and, that. And, I got to. Absolutely. You, God is salute absolutely. you for that. And, I, and listen, and more than, more than anything, I salute you for not. Because a lot of kids, a lot of youngins coming up, they got parents that care for them, that be in their life. Yep. And then they get 18, they get 17, they get 19, and then they just hit a crossroad where they just want to do what the fuck. Now, now all of a sudden, what your dad tell you, you don't want to hear that shit now. So I salute you for staying 10 toes down because you could easily say, man, dad, I'm tired of this boxing shit. I've been doing this shit forever, man. I'm going to do something else. Or you feel what I'm saying? I am. Oh, man, I'm trying to be over here in the streets. I'm trying to. And you you stayed, you stayed the course. That shit's hard. And I'm going to say this. Though. I got to say this. young shit. and you had so many motherfuckers. You got so many influences. It's hard for youngins to stay the course. So give your flowers while you alive too, because you stayed sure. the course. You you but when he was telling you, you believed in that shit. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of times, th that's where the separation come. The belief, the belief start going. Oh, I don't know. I don't. Then you stayed the course. So I commend both of y'all, man. And I and I want to say something to a lot of cats out there, right? Because I came up in the streets and I just had my grandma, my mom, my step pop was in the joint. I used to go to visit him in the joint. And I'm going to say this, man. If you got a five out there, take advantage of the opportunities that you got with him. Because I ain't had that shit. And it was a lot of times when I came up, I was I felt alone. I was by myself. And I had to go to the streets to try to look for a dad, man. And I sometimes put that responsibility in some OG's hands. And they put me on a dummy mission. Mm -hmm. They put me on a straight sucker mission. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't had no... I, my dad wasn't... You know, he was gone. Don't know what happened. But he was gone. So if you got a dad, man... Stop thinking you the first nigga that ended the street game was uh, up on some hip shit and your dad is square because they older and they laying back now. Stop that dumb shit. Everything that you got going on, yeah, we was doing it. We was the same sayings. It was a different way. The same drugs was here. The same game was here. The same con was here. Stop thinking you the first person that ran into some shit. If you got a dad, respect that and try to get with them so he can put some protection on you because the nigga in the street, the only protection they going to put on you is some game on how do you going to benefit them, not going to benefit you. Mm -hmm. So you got to be mindful. You know what I mean? Start howling at your pop. If you got a pop out there, reach out to that nigga. Try to figure out if he don't want to be in your life solid. But if you got a dad, man, tap into the motherfucker, man. Because I wish, I ain't going to hold you. I wish I had a dad. I probably wouldn't have did 20 in the pen, five years in the juvenile system. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because I'd have had somebody to check me and grab me up and say, no, nigga, what the fuck is you doing, man? You my boy. You with me. Come on. I was waiting for a motherfucker to pull up on me. It was plenty of times I was sitting on the steps hoping, damn, my dad might come through today. I ain't know what the fuck was going on. He never showed up. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But the game showed up. The streets showed. The streets always showed up for me. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And I always showed up at the motherfucking the the, the local uh, police department for some reason. <laughs> I always showed up at the detention center. I showed up at the motherfucking penitentiary too. And they was like, "Come on in, come on in." You know what I mean? And, and you know that's the game. I'm just being real. So showed you got, up in the showers with Ricky Minaj. That's something. That's something. No hundred percent. You hundred percent. But I'm just being real, man. Take advantage of the people that love you, especially mm -hmm. your fathers. And like, be Absolutely. out there, man. If you got a son and you ain't connected with him right now, go holler at your baby, man. Yeah. Go holler at your seed when somebody put some game on him, man. And, and on some penitentiary directory shit, have him up in the pen, walking the tracks, some fucking with. Mm -hmm. But you got that's you, real, you know. And just and you 100 percent right on that, but. When we give the story, we got to give it a hundred percent. And Devin was homeschooled by wow. by me and his his grandma. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? My mom. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and I think parents. Well, now because it's the it's the quarantine, and mm -hmm. now everybody, the kids yeah, are at home, they're and more. they're no, they're at home, and mm -hmm. and now you get a chance to see the education that's being put down at the school, and mm -hmm. you act actually have to be active now with the computer. Right. But me and Devin, we was doing that shit. Way back, right. way back when, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, right. so um, I think it's it then becomes parents having confidence in themselves and their ability to educate their kids and to have yeah. everything at home. So a lot of things 
that Devin, he's, he's more advanced because, you know, he didn't do the same little bullshit at school, you right, know, because right. when he found out, you know, and then I'll let you talk about it, when he realized that he was going to be what he was going to be was far sooner than most kids right. do. You know what I'm saying? Well, you knew you was going to be about to eight, huh? <laughs> you be that nigga. <laughs> nigga took you to the gym. You take you get your ass with people that beat niggas up. Uh, I'm about to be yeah, like this what, shit. That story, yeah. So when he did say, when when I thought that that was going to happen, right. because, you know what I mean? I'm just, because he was playing football mm -hmm. and it didn't happen. Right. Mm -hmm. It didn't. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And when I say that the guy seen him, and the guy said, your kid is a natural. So now I got back in the car the same. I'm looking at this nigga different now. Man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because even in football, he was competitive. Right. You know, the, you know, we were involved. He was the running back. And then the coach had the quarterback mm -hmm. was his son. Mm -hmm. And then me and Devin would come, you know, because he wants to ball every time. Right. You know, football, he wants the ball every time, right? He competitive. Oh, shit. Right, he wants all, you know, little the greedy offensive little line. Nigga. Right? Give me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> the ball. Right. Well, 46 <laughs> carries. <laughs> like crazy they shit. Say, they say hit the two hole, right? So he come there and he come all the way back, right? So I say, Dad, you got to wear the defense down, right? Mm -hmm. This is the point of football, right? right? And he say, Dad, look at him. Right. And this whole offensive line, they picking up grass, they picking up bugs. They just, you know, they're not they're as long. focused as him. Right? Like, they're not, I can't do this. Yeah, they're, they're not as serious. Right? right. So that at that point in time, I saw the competitive spirit in him young. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you explain it to a kid. You got to wear down a defense mm -hmm. past your offensive line. Just keep hitting and just keep pounding. It didn't resonate. It didn't make right. sense. And it didn't make sense to me to force him to do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So then he's boxing and shit and I'm like, I'm like, Dad, which one do you, you want to do? He said boxing. I put this in this my hand. Right? Didn't you say that? You said boxing. He when said, he's boxing and I can control this. I can't control these niggas blocking for me, Dad. They lazy. <laughs> they playing, they playing <laughs> with bugs and shit. Yeah, that's what, I, picking I, up grass. Yeah, that's I don't what. like to lose in nothing. Like, yeah. like yeah. nothing at all. I don't, like with my friends, I don't play video games that I know that I'm going to lose, lose in. I really in the house. I was just practicing. I'm when I get home. I'm about to go beat my nigga up in UFC because I'm practicing. Though I don't like to lose yeah. in nothing. I'm gonna okay. practice mm -hmm. as much as I can before I ever lose in anything. And with boxing, it's all on me. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's definitely all on you. Let me ask you a question. You you 22. You got the cars. You got the jewelry. The women love you. You're a champion. How you remain so humble? I mean. My goal that, that I set out to do from the beginning, from the jump, from when I decided I was going to get into boxing, I, I haven't accomplished it. I haven't, I haven't accomplished it yet. So it's no way that I could not stay focused and, and not stay on task, stay on course of, of, of what my plan is to do. And I want to be the best fighter ever. I want my name to be, to be mentioned with the greats. I want, 53 my name, enough. I want my name to live on forever and ever. And uh, if it's 53 and 0, 54 and 0, 55 and 0, 60 and 0, we don't right, know. Right, okay. We just got to see. Who the best fighter of all time? I can't narrow it down to one. I can't narrow it down to one. Who's the best fighter of all time if you had to narrow it down to one? Um, I would definitely say Muhammad Ali and how he impacted the culture and, and what, he's, what he did for us as, as, as uh, people, as black people. You know, mm -hmm. that, I, I would have to hands down say Ali. Okay. You know, and you couldn't pick. I can't narrow it down the way. It's, it's, it's so many. Um, I couldn't do two. Sugar Ray Robinson. Sugar Ray Robinson, Sugar Ray Leonard, Floyd, Ali. As a so Thomas. you don't believe that Floyd is number one just because he was undefeated? No. Oh, okay. No. Oh, but is he is he up there? No, he's definitely, definitely. up there. I think Floyd Mayweather can, can is you, the best can, can defensive you, fighter of all can time you and the say best he, businessman can, of all time. If somebody said that he was the best, up, that that in their opinion he was the best ever, I wouldn't I wouldn't argue with him. No, you can't really I, argue with. I, I would I would definitely give Floyd has probably impacted Devin's career probably the most. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Of 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 any other other fighter, and well, he knows all of them. My father, I feel <clears> like I feel like Floyd. His career has impacted mainly all the newer fighters that yes. came behind yes. them. Yes. yes, because the the blueprint that he set down is is a whole fucking different level. Right, like 
What do you mean, 200 million in a fight? Or in one, well, 36 in, minutes. In 36 minutes. minutes. 36 minutes. So that's a, that's a whole different. Right. That's a whole different ball game when you, you feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and like, you didn't even know that type of shit was possible. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So now, when Floyd do it, in a fighter that's, that's Devin's age, the sky is the limit. I could make five hundred million dollars in a, in one fight because there's no cap on this now. Yes, I just gotta get my my name and my and my socials and my because what's so crazy now is that you don't you don't even have to be a a hell of a fighter no more if you could put people eyes on that screen. Ask Nate Robinson that shit, man. You better knock it off. You better know how to fight before you get your ass kicked. <laughs> no. Fuck up. Do not listen to him. No, 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 no. You better not. You don't fuck your social. No, you no. better get in that fucking gym. No, no, no. And if what you I'm can't talking about, be what, who you, go prime ahead. example, right? Uh, AB. People won't tune in to see AB no matter what happens. To this day. But they are coming to see him lose. And, or look and listen, or no, they're coming. Yeah. And right. I love I love A B. I yeah, love A B to death. Right? But they come to see him lose and he's been doing a good job at it. Mm. You against A B. Make it happen. We're working on something. You against A B A B. No, no, but we, no, we, 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 we got something up. We Go got ahead, something up. Go ahead. Ohio. Ohio. Yeah. Make the announcement. Oakland looking for you. So hold on. Oakland, Oakland looking, looking for, for Oakland oh, looking for public service announcement. Oakland looking for a fucking body. So Oakland looking Coming for Coming to a hood near you. Oakland looking for <laughs> Baltimore. Baltimore. First. First and foremost. First and foremost. Then New York. Yeah. Because Teofimo's from New York. Mm -hmm. Right? What, California? California. Ryan. Ryan Garcia. Uh -huh. And then Ohio. Ohio. You looking for four months? I'm going to keep it all the way real, though. The, the, the biggest fight. Is him and Ryan? Right now. Him and AB. Me and him and AB. Me and Tank. Him and AB. No, him listen, and AB. Listen. I think me I mean, and Tank. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what we can do. I'll tell you what we can do with AB. What? Right? Make it for an exhibition, man. Adrian Brown and Devin Haney exhibition. Right now. What you think about that? I, I, shit, I tune in. I tune in. I, shit. I Tell me to make it happen then. AB, let's make this happen. AB. We with it. Uh, uh, Devin Haney, Adrian Broner, exhibition. Adrian Broner, Devin Haney, exhibition. However y'all want to pull it. Ain't no disrespect to put nobody name first, nobody name. However y'all want to put it. Mm. Let's make this happen. Right here on Million Dollars Worth of Games, yeah, we, like, we setting a stage <laughs> right here. A.B. About billions. About business. About business. What we doing? Dev, Dev said he with it. You with it? I'm with it. An uh, exhibition. I'm with it. What I'm about it. the uh, regular fight? I'm with it. He with whatever. I'm with whatever. Well, they have different weight classes, so let's let's keep Let's, well, let's, 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 decide, let's decide. Let's decide a weight. Let's decide a weight. One forty-two. Give it to the people. Yeah, give it to the people. Dev keep his belt. Adrian Broner keep his thing. His thing that he got going on. And let's let the people see it, man. Let's let, let the people see it. You know? Is exhibitions the new wave in boxing? Yeah. Okay. Starting to. That's what it seemed like. I mean, I, for us, for me, the way that I'm looking at it, it's a way to put two guys in the ring that. Is a true fantasy fight, but let's make it a weight. Let's make everything where it'll fit both of them right. and make it happen and let the people get a chance to see it. How you feel mm -hmm. about Floyd fighting Logan Paul? Um, well, like I said about both uh, uh, Roy Jones and Mike Tyson, I felt that the boxing community needs to get as many roses while they can smell them. Floyd has did a tremendous job of carrying the sport and paving the way for, for, for the Devons uh, of the world that he deserves as many roses as he can. Mike Tyson and Roy Jones as well. So the exhibitions, I'm, I'm all for it. I watch it. We had we had a fight party and we watched it. So mm -hmm. you hey, know man. what I mean? Hey, man, can I, can I can my OG, 
Absolutely. OG. Hey, this is the slickest talking. Absolutely. This is the slickest talking nigga, man. Hey, listen, OG. Can you tell us a little bit about Devin Haney before we get? Could you end the show off right? And give us a little bit about Devin Haney before we get out of here. Could you look in that camera right look there? Look at that camera right there and, and, talk tell, to and tell him a little bit about Devin Haney real quick before we get out of here. Talking about Tank, Lord Devin Haney will run circles around Tank. Tank already can't hardly talk, so you know he can't think. <laughs> the speed will be so fast and so fine. Understand me, you won't want to blink. Fastest man to peck and poke and don't joke for Ryan crying Garcia, there'll be no hope. Luke the flu, you don't want to ramble, Mr. Campbell. We thirst and burn and we love you, the great Eddie Hearn. Lord Devin Haney and the great Bill Haney. B.H. the great, sent his son in there to set the record straight for all you suckers eating out late. You just saw what happened to Gamboa. No star from Cuba. He fell like Fidel. Say no more for Castro. That chapter is over with. Now, I'm going to tell you, monkeys, one thing. You know what? Lord Devin Haney going to clean up that division. We, put, we fight two of you, and Bob Aram, you stole it from me. You said something about Tia Fimo fighting two contenders or two top opponents in one night. Well, your man is on the Richter scale with trying to cry and rhyme. I ain't going to say no more. You keep the show time to fight fine with that speed, the blind. He always balling. He bigger than the Alameda Coliseum that we call or all call. He's never in a hurry. He's smooth like Stephon Curry, and he can be mean like Draymond Green. <laughs> I ain't going to say no more. Listen, man. Listen, man. You heard it. Understand <laughs> Hey, hey, direct from hey nigga, that was game. You hear that me? Was, that was a million yeah, dollars. He said he dripped in Dior. He's a looker and a hooker. Yeah. yeah. Keep me right. Come in the door with 28000 you monkeys. $281 bills. I stayed at the mansion while he put that on display. Hmm. We coming back. Biggest pay-per-view of all time. Mm. Tank, oh. you in trouble. Mm. Say no more for Baltimore. You ain't did nothing since the likes or none other than Hassan Rockman. He was the biggest thing to come out of that next to LeVar Jackson. Mm. You are not on the Richter scale. Damn. And quit saying stuff about, I'm listening to the announcers. You and this. Ain't no and. I love you two brothers. Dang. Stop that. Ain't no ain't no Gary Wells and Evil Knievel. Mm. Ain't none of that shit. Mm. It's Evil Knievel. It's <laughs> Devin Haney. It ain't no answer to I like the boy. Ain't no and we, I think. No, no. This WBC <laughs> world champion. You can't take it. The great Terrafimo Lopez said, take that great off there. Tristina Lopez said to the boy, uh, uh, what's her name? What's his Bro- name? Romeo. What's his Bo- name? Romero. Tristina? Tristina Lopez. Uh, Tristina. Tristina Lopez. <laughs> he said, I didn't win no belt. I only won one belt. They didn't give me two belts. The man admitted. And Joe Tessa's tour. I love it. Look. Anybody from ESPN top rank, we'll beat him up and leave him swole up the soil. <laughs> Timothy Bradley. <laughs> Sadly, that you won't speak on the king's name because you shame. And Andre Ward, you have defected and have been rejected from Oakland. <laughs> Man, Andre. You didn't speak about Lord Devin Haney. You didn't say nothing in the microphone. Bill Haney let me talk right now. They keep a gag on me because I tell you, monkeys, the there truth. There you go. Keep going. Not on me, I was with the game, Billy. Don't like. say no more. ESPN, you're not our friend. Lord Devin Haney captivating the last game. Your name won't be mentioned. Not to mention this dipping boxing rendition. I ain't gonna keep talking because it upset me what y'all doing. All them straps gonna be ours. You won't get far. Strap he season. don't drink, he hang with the stars, and he don't be at the bars. Yes, sir, he had a big cause. Mm. And I'm sitting up on the 38th floor in the sky. Now I got the flow. I got the flow. Yeah, 38 on the wrist, nigga, and 20 on the neck. Lord Devin Haney beat you up with no sweat. It's just like that. Right!